I do believe everyone should do a combination of cardiovascular training and resistance training, perhaps, I think in general, not on the same days, but if you're going to do that and you want to maintain healthy immune system function, my suggestion, what I do is, unless it's the long bout of cardiovascular training that I do once a week, and long for me means 60 to 90 minutes, and sometimes longer if it's a hike, which certainly doesn't require that much intensity, I suggest warming up for about five to 10 minutes and then limiting your total workout duration to about 50 minutes, maybe 60 minutes if that's what's required to complete what you need to do in order to keep with your exercise goals. But to be very careful about exceeding 75 minutes of exercise in any one single exercise bout. And if you remember back to the beginning of the episode when I said that I track what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and I don't do it in a very detailed way, but I do take note of when I've gotten a bad flu or cold, I can tell you that in almost every single case where I've gotten a bad flu or cold, there are two things that have preceded that bad flu or cold. One is sleep deprivation. Typically it would be nights where I got two hours of sleep or less for more than one night, okay? The second thing is any time that I really pushed it with exercise and went all out and I went for 75 minutes and then I continued to 90 minutes and then maybe later that day because somebody invited me on a run or something like that, I also did that second run or that second workout of some kind. Could be running in the morning and weight training in the afternoon. Some people can do that kind of training on a regular basis even and not get sick. I am not such a person. I've managed to maintain fairly consistent fitness output, meaning the three cardiovascular and the three weight training sessions per week for more than several decades now. And part of the reason I think I've been able to do that is because I don't ever push too hard for too long within a given workout. So this is really a call for moderation in terms of the duration and intensity of the exercise that you're doing, but we're not talking about really being laid back. We're not talking about easy workouts. What we're talking about is an hour or less of moderate intensity to high intensity exercise, depending on the duration of that exercise. And keeping in mind that when you're doing that, you are activating that innate immune system. You are literally creating an immune response. You're increasing inflammation. You're increasing those cytokines. You're increasing stress hormones. We have to start to think about exercise for what it is, which is a form of stress that induces adaptations. Exercise is a very potent tool. We know that. We know that in the context of changing aesthetics, like body mass composition, you know, increasing muscle, reducing fat. We know that in the context of reducing resting heart rate, reducing resting blood pressure. We know that in the context of all these other health metrics, here we're talking about using exercise as a very potent tool to increase the function of the innate immune system to keep you healthy, not just through the winter months, but around the year. And especially if you're getting less sleep, if you're interacting with kids or adults that are carrying infections home from school or work on a regular basis, or maybe you even work in an environment like a hospital or a clinic where you're regularly interacting with patients that have these issues. One thing that I often get asked is, if I am sleep deprived, should I exercise? And that's a little bit of a tricky one. My initial response for many years was, no, no. If you're sleep deprived, you're better off not exercising. However, I now need to qualify that answer because there are data showing that if you're sleep deprived and you exercise, especially if you exercise early in the day and it doesn't disrupt your sleep schedule, so it's not making you go to sleep even later the next night, that it actually can cause some adjustments in the function of your immune system and in the way that you regulate your blood sugar that offset some of the negative effects of sleep deprivation. That said, you should never ever compromise the amount of sleep you could get in order to get exercise such that you run yourself down. So what I'm really saying here is if you get one bad night's sleep, should you skip your workout and you feel like, ah, you know, I'm not feeling sick and uh, should I work out or should I uh, go back to sleep? Probably going back to sleep's the better idea, but if you don't have the option to go back to sleep for whatever reason, you can't fall back asleep, then you would be wise to do a bout of exercise, but I would suggest reducing the intensity and duration of that exercise by about 25%, maybe even 50%. And that should allow you to offset any of the negative effects of sleep deprivation for that one night. Keep in mind, exercise is not a replacement for sleep. And then to allow you to get to sleep at the appropriate time later that night and back onto a regular schedule, keeping your innate immune system tuned up and ready to combat any colds or flus. Now, one more point about exercise. And here we're also going to dovetail in an important point about nutrition. In the review that I mentioned a few moments ago, they cover some of the data from studies exploring the post-exercise stress response. So this is the post-exercise induced increase in things like cortisol, those natural killer cells, the production of white blood cells, and so on. It's very clear that if you are in a state of chronic stress because you're exercising a lot and or because you're not sleeping enough, or for whatever reason, maybe you have a lot of life stress, it's very clear that ingesting carbohydrates after exercise can help attenuate some of the inflammation that exercise induces. 